Okay. Trying to set this camera up. You guys. So I can... So I can read to you a little bit. Okay. So this was one of the um, the first books that I've read. It's um. John named the Seeker of Visions. Alone on a hilltop. I was alone on a hilltop. I sat there in the vision pit, a hole dug into the hill, arms hugging my knees as I watched Old Man Chest the medicine man who had brought me there disappear far down into the valley. He was just a moving black dot among the pines and soon he was gone altogether. Now I was all by myself left on a hilltop for four days and nights without food or without water until he came back for me. You know, we Indians are not like some white folks, a man and a wife and two children and one babysitter who watches TV set while parents are out visiting somewhere. Indian children are never alone. They are always surrounded by grandparents, uncles, cousins, relatives of all kinds who fondle the kids, sing to them, tell them stories. If the parents go someplace, the kids go along. But here I sit, crouched in a vision pit left alone by myself for the first time in my life. I was 16 then, still had my boy's name. Let me tell you, I was scared. I was shivering and not only from the cold, the nearest human being was only miles was miles away for four days and nights. It's a long, long time. Of course, when it was all over, I would no longer be a boy, but a man. I would have had my vision. I would be given a man's name. Sioux men are not afraid to endure hunger, thirst, and loneliness. Sorry. And I was only 96 hours away from being a man. The thought was comforting. Comforting to when the warmth of the star blanket, which old man chest had wrapped around me to cover my neckness. My grandmother had made it especially for this. My first hemblacha. My first vision quest vision seeking it was beautifully designed quilt with white 
with a large morning star made of many pieces of brightly colored cloth. That star was so big, it covered most of the blanket. If Wonka Tonka, the great spirit, would give me the vision and power, I would become a medicine man and perform many ceremonies wrapped in this quilt. I am an old man now, and many times a grandfather, but I still have that star blanket my grandmother made for me. I treasure it. Someday I'll be buried in it. The medicine man had also left a piece of peace pipe with me, together with a bag of our kind of tobacco made of red willow bark. This pipe was even more of a friend to me than my star blanket. To us, the pipe is like an open Bible. White people need to go to a church house and a preacher and a pipe organ to get into praying mood. There are so many things to distract you who else is in the church, whether the other people notice that you have come? The pictures on the wall determine how much money you should give and did you bring it with you? We think you can't have a vision that way. For us Indians, there is just the pipe. The earth we sit on, the open sky, the spirit is everywhere. Sometimes it shows itself through an animal, a bird, or some trees and hills. Sometimes it speaks from the badlands, a stone, or even from the water. The smoke from the peace pipe, it goes straight up to the spirit world. But this is two-way thing. Power flows down to us through that smoke, through the peace stem, through the pipe stem. You feel that power as you hold your pipe. It moves from the pipe into your body. It makes your hair stand up. That pipe is not just a thing. It is a life. Smoking this pipe would make me feel good and help me to get rid of my fears. As I ran my fingers along its bowl of smooth red pipestone, red like the blood of my people, I no longer felt scared. The pipe had belonged to my father, to his father before him. It would someday pass to my son, through him, my, gr my grandchildren. As long as we had the pipe, there would be a Sioux Nation. As I fingered the pipe, touched it, felt its smoothness, and came from long use, I sensed my forefathers who had once smoked this pipe were with me on this hill, right in the vision pit. I was no longer alone. Besides, the pipe the medicine man had also given me, a gourd. In it were 40 small squares of flesh, which my grandmother had cut from her arm with a razor blade. I had seen her do it. Blood had been streaming down from her shoulder to her elbow as she carefully put each piece of skin on a handkerchief, anxious not to lose a single one. It would have made those anthropologists mad. Imagine performing such an ancient ceremony with a razor blade instead of a flint knife. To me, it didn't matter. 
someone dear to me had undergone pain, given me something of herself, part of her body to help me pray, make me strong hearted. How could I be afraid with so many people living and dead helping me? Okay, I'm going to stop there. And I'll continue with you guys later, okay? Dokshar.